I want to talk about just you. you I'm you asked me for an you asked me for an instance, and I gave you one. Okay, uh, yeah, but I'm I know that I am the one that gets castigated as the uh, ideologue. But so, not by me. But not by me. Okay, so okay, so it's, you're not talking about me. So let's just no, make it about you and it. I, and not sort of defend ourselves by saying, well, there are bad incrementalists. Because I'm just being honest with you as a brother. I am saying the kind of incrementalist that I oppose is not them. I get that, but it's you. I'm saying you would write and sign laws that God hates and God will oppose, and those laws are a bad tutor in the culture. They bring the they bring the punishments. The judgment recently on the Bible Dingers podcast or YouTube channel, uh, they had a fabulous discussion uh, with uh, Pastor Doug Wilson from Moscow, Idaho, and uh, T. Russell Hunter um, uh, as well. And so, uh, this discussion was concerning the idea of abortion, right? Uh, obviously, both parties would would go against abortion very rigidly, right? They would be very, very rigidly against abortion. But it's all about methodology, right? The that's the that was the discussion of on Bible Diggers podcast was concerning methodology. So Doug Wilson was is is a incrementalist and Hunter is a abolitionist. Obviously, they both have the same end goal in sight as far as completely eradicating getting rid of abortion. But once again, the methodology is of subject matter here. In which way should we approach this? Should we approach it from an abolitionist standpoint where it says that all abortion, no matter what week of the pregnancy, no matter what, should be absolutely gone and eradicated right now? Or should they be an incrementalist approach where there's sort of progressive steps to this? There's sort of a method to the madness, if you will. That is the discussion that took place on the Bible Digger podcast or YouTube channel. And I thought it went very well. I did watch the whole debate all the way up to sort of the halfway point of the Q&A. And I thought the debate went very well. The decorum was absolutely fabulous. Um, two brothers in Christ who believe that Christ is king and believe that uh, abortion is absolutely disgusting and a horrific thing were able to come together and disagree on something that's obviously important, but they disagreed in a fashion that I believe was glorifying to God. Um, and they, they can have hard, strong disagreements, but yet not tear each other down. I thought that was a very, very, very positive thing, a very good thing and a very uh, uh, delightful thing to watch. But as always, I do have a portion of the debate that I did want to interact with. I myself would be considered an abolitionist. I do believe that abortion should be totally eradicated. No matter what week of the pregnancy, it should be completely gone. Obviously, there are exceptions there. The only exception that I would consider is the one, a tubular pregnancy or a baby, you know, a baby developing in a spot that's not where it needs to be developing because that will kill the baby eventually and kill the mother. Obviously, you would have to abort that child in that instance but that is the only exception that i would give um, i don't give exceptions to incest i don't give exceptions to uh, rape i don't give exceptions to any of those uh concepts right uh, so uh that will that will cause an abortion or uh, cause a pregnancy should i say but certainly um uh, i would definitely outside of those that one exception that I said, I definitely would fall on the abolitionist side. But all that said, let's get into this uh, this video. I don't want to waste too much time. But as always, if you have yet to watch the video, why don't you go over to the Bible Dingers podcast YouTube channel, watch the debate, come back to this channel, comment in the comment section, and let me know how you think the debate went. With that said, let's get into this video. All right, so this segment of the debate, this is sort of the open discussion between Hunter and uh, Wilson. And so these two are now engaging each other on the subject matter of abolition, abolitionist versus incrementalist. And so um, uh, concerning abortion. And so this is the portion that's about 29 minutes in. And so let's see what this discussion uh, has to say at this portion. The taking of human life in the womb, the same way we, we treat it um, uh, for those who are already born, those who are out and walking about. Uh, but let's make an easy case. Let's say, Let's say there's a, a woman who's got a medical degree. She's an OBGYN and she's had three abortions herself. Okay. Uh, do I believe that, that such a person should be in, in a just society, such a person should be charged with murder for obtaining an ab abortion? Yes, I do. Okay. So uh, a person 
with in that position should be charged with murder. If I signed a bill that um, waived any right of charging any mother at all, you know, let's say there was a, a carve out that said no, no woman is going to be charged with murder under this bill. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. would, I, would I sign that bill? Yes. And you say, but that means that woman is going to get off scot-free. She, you know, she, she's going to get off scot-free. I say, yes, but she's getting off scot-free now. She's getting off scot-free if I don't sign the bill and she's getting off scot-free if I do sign the bill. But if I sign the bill, the baby's saved. Now, I, what I don't want to do is tell the sorts of lies that sort of pour the concrete so that this, uh, it, it becomes unthinkable ever in the future to consider women who are pregnant as moral agents who are responsible to love, protect, and care for their unborn child. No, their women are moral agents, and they should be treated like moral agents, and the law should treat them like moral agents, and the goal should be to get the law to treat them like moral agents. But mm -hmm. laws are not just uh, laws are not just uh, things that make people do things. Laws also instruct people. Exactly. It's and so yeah, I get what Doug Wilson is saying that his whole emphasis is to save the baby. Um, regardless if the bill says that the mother will be held responsible, legally responsible as a, 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 and can be tried as a murderer. Um, I get that. But once again, I think that goes against the grain biblically, right? I think that goes against the grain biblically, biblically speaking, murderers are to be held accountable. Um, and we should have that standard. Uh, we should not allow the, the environmental uh, concern, so to speak, to dictate how we go about things. Now, to Doug Wilson's defense, he did say that if there was an abolitionist bill to pass his desk, if he was a legislator and there was an abolitionist bill to pass across his desk, he would certainly sign it. But what Doug Wilson is, is concerned is that, no, but that won't happen, right? That wouldn't happen because according to Doug Wilson and many other incrementalists, the abolitionist approach is too aggressive. It's quote unquote, in some capacity, I guess, not necessarily quoting Doug Wilson, but it's some incrementalists will say that it's a too radical approach that is sort of off-putting or it turns off the legislator that has the opportunity to uh, sign the bill because that legislator is more concerned about the the outrage that may come about because of such an, a, a, a hardline bill being passed. While all that being, that that may be the case, but once again, as a Christian, that should not be what we're concerned about. We should be concerned more about saving babies and holding people responsible for what they did. Also, like in this heartbeat bill, um, it does say that the doctors can be held responsible if they violate the six week protocol of, of the pregnancy, right? Um, the heartbeat bill says that any pregnancy past six weeks cannot be aborted. Um, but if the doctor aborts a baby, maybe the fourth week of the pregnancy, uh, then they could be held responsible. But at the same time, it doesn't hold the parent responsible, the mother responsible for their action. And that's the problem, right? Uh, all parties involved should be held morally responsible, um, and, and be, and be held. So obviously Doug Wilson would say yes to God in, in, in the eyes of God, that person is held responsible for murdering their child. But at the same time. Now, in this world that we're living in, that wouldn't be the case, right? That would not be the case. But um, let's see how uh, Mr. Mr. Hunter responds. One of our main points, like you right. believe the law is a tutor. Right, correct. So and I the, agree. I, I but agree the bill you would sign, the bill you would sign and declare as governing authority of a state or the president says you will not be punished if you sacrifice your child. Maybe right. later. But you won't. So how does that tutor the culture? So if the if the laws against murder are not executed swiftly, do not the hearts of the children of men run to do evil? Yeah, Ecclesiastes eight eleven. Yep. Right. Uh, why, yeah. why why do you go? Why do you disagree with that verse? I don't. <laughs> I don't. Well, uh, no, God. If he, he says, "Do not pervert justice," writing a bill that says, "In the event that you murder a child in the womb." You will not be punished. Where punishment is not speedily executed upon the criminal, there the heart of man is filled to do evil. Mm -hmm. That is true. 
if that's I don't sign the bill, that's that's true. If I don't sign the bill, and that's true. If I do sign the bill, the, the no, woman's getting no, the woman's getting the away with it in both cases. No, so yeah, but I think what Hunter is saying is that if we don't have a bill in place that sort of tutors or directs the individual to not do that, right? So you have a law in place that's acting as a tutor, just like God's commandments and laws was a tutor for us to know what right wrong, what right is and what wrong is, right? These, these are sort of rules in place to sort of give us the guardrails to stay within proper boundaries. But what Hunter is saying is that if we don't have a, a rule, just outright ban abortion altogether type of law in place, then people are able to go outside of those guardrails and they're able to do things uh, permissive how they ever how they feel. And if there's no law in place that says that that woman who goes and gets said abortion, um, if there's no rules in place that said that that woman will be held accountable, will be held as a murderer, then she can go do what she wants. She's going to be flipping about it. If there if, if she can't get it like at a hospital, she's gonna go through the back alley to do it on a black market or whatever it is, right? Black market, whatever, I might've said that wrong. But my point is, is that there's no rules in place that holds that person accountable for their actions. And I think that's what Hunter is saying, is why not put a rule in place or a law in place that totally outlaws abortion and and, and treats the, the offenders as, as criminals so that they won't even consider doing it. And if they do consider it, and if they go ahead and do it, they will be punished for it. That's what Hunter is saying there. No, if you sign an app, so you said you'd sign an abolition bill. So an abolition bill you sign and says, if you with malice of forethought terminate a child in the womb, you will be facing murder charges. And then that gets put into law and it gets put in the newspapers and all the 10 year old girls and boys read it. And they go, wow, the governing authorities think that abortions murder, thou shalt not murder. I'm not gonna do it. And that tutoring, they, they may still murder against the law like people do, but the tutoring is, justice is being established abortion is murder mm -hmm. don't do it but if you sign the bill that you're talking about it says listen if you're going to murder you got to do it before cardiac activity and you got to have this excuse or this kind of the baby was conceived in this way and in the event that you do it there's no punishment so the tutor of that law is uh not thou shall not murder it's like right now for the next year or until we change this until right. we smash mouth our way to the next thing right now you can murder that's the effect of that law and, right. and outside of the you're, you're looking at it from like what will save babies the most looking at it from the perspective of like what is obedient to god what does god want most does god want you signing a bill that shows partiality to some people over other people does god want you signing a bill that acquits the guilty does God want you signing a bill that explicitly denies the government a sword of justice? And so, so the government can't do it. It prohibits. I'd say it all perverts justice. So, so here's the thing. All right. So we're going to let Doug respond to Hunter's uh, argument, uh, response to him. But I do believe to defend Doug Wilson, I do believe that Doug Wilson would say that it's not okay to murder your baby at no time. But what Doug Wilson is saying is that all that said, it is reasonable to, to say that, well, let's get something in place fundamentally, regardless if it's a heartbeat bill or an abolition bill, the heartbeat bill is something, right? It's, we're, we're making grant, we're making grant, we're taking, we're getting somewhere with this, with the heartbeat bill. We may not be at the goal end of totally eradicating abortion, but there are some, some steps that are being made here. That's what Doug Wilson is saying. So I think that, uh, so Hunter, I think Hunter may be sort of straw manning Doug's position a little bit, not saying uh, in that, that Doug Wilson, he doesn't necessarily believe that uh, a goal falls in line with the, the implications of such a law. But what Doug Wilson is saying is that we're getting somewhere, right? Implications being that someone may be allowed to murder within that first four weeks before the heartbeat is established, right? But Doug Wilson would disagree with that. Doug Wilson would say, no, they shouldn't be a matter. They shouldn't be allowed to murder at no week, at no time, right? They shouldn't be allowed. They shouldn't be allowed to get abortion at no time. But what Doug Wilson is like, but we're getting somewhere if we at least stop it at six weeks, right? And that's typically the incrementalist argumentation. 
right? And so that 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 that's the position that Doug will hold. So I don't think he would say once again that yeah, go ahead and murder any, go ahead and murder your baby uh, four weeks in. You know, I don't think Doug Wilson would say that. He would say at no time should you murder, but at the very least, we're getting somewhere with this Harvey Bill saying that you can't murder after six weeks, right? So that, I think that's what Doug Wilson is saying. If I were to sign an abolitionist bill, and I would, so I would therefore invite you to call me an abolitionist, right? I, we we would have an intramural disagreement. Or just justice and only. If you did justice and only justice, I'd call you no, an abolitionist. No, I, I'd sign an abolitionist bill. You get it to my desk, I'll sign it. Okay. Okay. Uh, so if if I do that, I can pretty much guarantee whatever state I'm in. If I sign an abolition bill, then there'd be a total, complete freak out from the progressive left. Okay, actually, probably. Well, they're probably. not. They're not sovereign, and they don't have any power. Right. Uh, we're <laughs> not trying to pre please the progressive no, left. No, which I, I, I'm off. making a different. I'm making a different point. Okay. Um, the I don't care about the freak out. Uh, in fact, I I would expect the freak out. All I'm saying is, I believe that if I signed simply signed an abolition bill. There'd be a total freak out from the other side because we're we're going after their precious. Amen. Abor abortion is their blood sacrament. Okay. And the abolition bill targets that and is a bullseye there. Okay. All I'm saying is that if I signed a heartbeat bill and the kind of signing statement that I would issue alongside of it, I believe I could get the same freak out. <laughs> and well, no, you're, you're you're telling them we're gonna leave your blood sacrament in place. Oh, they, but yes. Well, uh, they might freak out to seek funds. Oh, he's, he's doing something, but you leave their blood sacrament in place. Well, you tell I, them I, it's okay. And they're not going to get in trouble. No, the, the, the point is that um, I'll put it this way. If I issued, if I signed the heartbeat bill and the signing statement, uh, I believe that the progressive left for whom abortion is their blood sacrament, they would believe me that I'm coming after them. My abolitionist friends don't believe me that, you know, they, they don't, they, think well, they, it's not. they may say they do, but um, they might say, yeah, they've been doing this. They've been smashing their mouths like this for 52 years. Yeah. They're going to do it. Like, I, I don't, I just don't Actually, believe, no, but they, uh, I would say uh, this has not been a 52 year thing. So the, um, the, uh, you don't the think the right. incrementalists have been wanting to abolish abortion? I think the incrementalists, uh, well, there's a wide, there's always been a wide range of incrementalism. There, there are people that I think are true blue, and there are people that I think people are like you, like it. people, people like you. Just, just make it people like you, people like me. Like you don't think that there's been people, um, you know, passing laws that are filled with things that God actually despises, and then therefore God hates those laws. But they've always been attaching, like, um, platitudes, like, oh, babies are made in the image of God, and they're precious, and we we want to eradicate abortion. But we're not doing that now in our laws. In our laws, what we're actually saying is you're allowed to murder. If you, I would say this, the pro- yeah, and I, and I would agree with Hunter on this, is that within our laws now, even with the heartbeat bill in place, we're allowed to murder, right? The woman is allowed to murder. If they, can do, if they know that they're pregnant within the first four to five weeks of their pregnancy, which a lot of women do, right? A lot of women are able to detect, uh, know that by missing their menstrual cycle, they, are a, they, have the, they have the right, according to law, that's on books right now, to go and get a, a to abort their child. Right. And so that's that's the that's the tough one that the incrementalists have to deal with. Right. That's the hard pill that they have to swallow is that is there really any effect? Is there really any type of um, effect that taking place if if a child is if a woman is protect, uh, if a woman sees that she's pregnant and knows she's pregnant within four weeks, she can still go ahead and do her thing. Right. And get an abortion. Is there any grounds that are being made? per se, you know, in this debate, Doug Wilson said that he believes there is grounds being made as far as saving babies. Um, but is there really at the end of the day, if people still have the liberty to, to, to go out and do these things, is there really grounds being made? Right. Um, my position is that from a, I think from a, a, a position, a Christian position, 
will be correctly aligned with a desire to get rid of it at any law that we go for should be to rid of it this progressive idea of slowly getting there is can be a hindrance in some capacity right it could be a hindrance and i think that's difficult i think that's something that's problematic um to to say but all in all i did think the debate went very well i thought the debate went very satisfying and once again big ups to bible dinger for putting on this conversation uh two prominent voices in this area of, of abortion of fighting against abortion and so i do appreciate their their the work uh, that comes with reaching out to these guys, aligning schedules and all that stuff. That stuff is hard uh, from one who does a whole bunch of debates and, uh, and interviews and things like myself, myself on the gospel truth. That's a very difficult thing. So I don't think a lot of people uh, really understand how difficult that is. That's really hard to get people aligned, especially guys like Doug Wilson and Mr. Hunter who are at really busy guys, guys that are continuously doing something every day, their schedule is full. And so um, it could be quite cumbersome. So that's why I appreciate Bible Dinger and their efforts to try to get this done. But all that said, once again, um, if you have yet to do so, make sure you go to the Bible Dinger YouTube channel and watch the debate yourself. And let me know what you think. Comment in the comments below uh, what you think of this uh, discussion and some of the, the, the goods and the bads, the stuff you did and didn't like. I would love to hear from you, all right? With that said, if you have yet to do so, make sure you subscribe to The Gospel Truth and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any shows that are coming up here in the future. May God bless you and may God keep you.